I think I will. Oh, we are live. <laughs> Good morning. We're, we're having some technical difficulties here in uh, <laughs> Be live land or Facebook land. We've had technical difficulties with Be Live, Zoom, you name it. It all seems to be um, going wrong this morning, but that's okay. That it's okay. All right, we we're are gonna get it. Okay, so yeah, what are we talking about today, Michaela? <laughs> we are gonna talk about. Um, I thought we would just talk, talk a little bit about natural childbirth and what what that really entails. Um, how do you prepare for it? And have you have you ever considered it? So um, yeah, let's talk about that. Well, <laughs> as the baby's screaming. Um, and, but anyway, so well, you've had three. Did you know going in you wanted a natural childbirth? That is a great question. So with the first one, um, I really just thought you went to the hospital and you had a baby. Like you didn't need to do anything. However, I started talking to a friend and um, he told me about a childbirth class and I thought, oh, I didn't even know you needed one of those, but did a little bit more research after that and decided to go ahead and take the class. And each week that my husband and I took the class, we realized more and more that we wanted to go down that path. So then we started asking the questions to our provider and um, reading books um, and preparing physically and, and mentally for a natural childbirth. And then we had such a great experience with the first that with the second and third, uh, it was without a doubt that that's what we wanted to do. So I guess the biggest question is <clears throat> whenever I was pregnant with my first, I was young and I again thought the same thing you did, but no one encouraged me to do any research. I didn't really have that type of, I guess, mentor or someone who had done it before. Um, and cause I was the youngest of all, you know, all my friends were young. So I was kind of the first one going through this and, um, I absolutely didn't think I wanted a natural childbirth because I just thought I couldn't do it. I mean, I was just like, Oh, that's silly. And I remember one person did tell me like, why would you want to do that? You don't get anything, you know, you don't get a gold star or an award. Like no one cares if you do it naturally. And I was like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of moved on with the idea, but I didn't think about the benefits to me mm -hmm. physically or the benefits to my baby, which is so silly when we think about all the benefits of, what type of car seat are we going to use? What type of crib? What type of crib mattress? You know, all these questions. But I didn't think about it. I was just like, oh, well, they have all these drugs, and so they must be fine. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't say that my reasoning for a natural childbirth with the first one started out because of the benefits to me and to baby. Uh, it was more of just... Um, well, I had had a really bad experience with anesthesia in a, it, what was supposed to be a minor surgery. Mm -hmm. So when I started thinking about that, I was like, oh my gosh, but what if I have a reaction to the epidural right. and I end up, I can't hold my baby or I can't, I have, you know, I something happens to me. Like that was what was kind of going through my head in the beginning. Right. Then, okay. Until I started doing the research and, and taking the classes that I saw the benefit to both myself and the baby. Um, but honestly, you know what sold me was the bond that I had with my husband after we had our first child. Like going through the classes, he was the big jokester and I, he didn't really take anything seriously and I just thought oh my gosh this is going to be a disaster he's just going to laugh the whole time and I'm going to want to punch him in the face right <laughs> you know, the right um and you know we learned how to communicate on a whole different level and, and we were young too and very newly married I mean we got pregnant a year into our marriage um and so we learned how to communicate I learned how to rely on him for comfort. Okay. And so after the fact, 
you know, I had this newfound love and appreciation for my husband, as well as being able to, you know, get up and take a shower and walk around. But ultimately, I think it was that, you know, ability to communicate and um, share that experience with my husband. Well, as you know, we kind of, we did our childbirth education class with the twins and knowing that there was a lot out of our control in that, that pregnancy. And we tried really hard, but even um, gearing up for having a natural childbirth with twins, um, knowing that there was a possibility that it may not happen, we were still prepared for everything. Um, and my husband still says to this day that he is so thankful because um, even in the childbirth class, we talked a lot about C-sections and we talked about a lot about emergency situations. We talked about what would happen to babies who are born that are early or things like that. So he was totally confident and um, felt prepared for what happened. Um, and we felt like we made the best decision we could in that situation. And um, he was really supportive to me because I think he really understood that this isn't how I wanted things to happen. But he, instead of him just going in and being like, oh, this is what needed to happen. It's totally fine. He really acknowledged my feelings. And so having your partner on the same page is so important, especially to you mentally um, going through a birth experience. It's, and especially if it doesn't turn out the way, you know, we as women plan it out in our heads, um, it's important to have them understand why you wanted it to go a certain way and understand how you might be feeling. Anyway, it was super valuable. And then it obviously um, carried over for when we had our last baby at home. So we didn't end up doing another childbirth class because we felt like we were totally prepared from the one that we did with the twins. Which is so crazy how we are sitting here full circle. Right. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's awesome. It's great how. It's um, an interesting perspective to go from, I showed up to a hospital and then I had a home birth. So it's. I'm um having a Nerf war in my house. <laughs> the darts keep hitting the window that I'm sitting next to. I see you going. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry. No, that's good. So yeah, I absolutely think that. I think people get really um, fearful. And so what some tips for, let's just say that this is your first day of actually thinking, well, maybe I do want a natural childbirth or maybe I can do one because you absolutely can. It's, it's totally doable. Um, so one of our tips would be to talk with your um, provider. Yes. And you want to see how supportive they are of natural childbirth. Some doctors just don't experience very many um, natural childbirths. It's kind of like, yeah, well, you want to know what their normal is. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't make them a bad person. No, if they don't see a lot of natural childbirth classes or uh, patients. Um, but you want to know what their normal is so that, you know, you're the, the bottom line is you're not going to change the provider into no. believing what you believe. However, you can change your provider. Right. Go into a different provider if you feel like you decide to go down this route of having right. a birth, and then you can um, seek out a provider that is already practicing that type of birth. Right. Um, it's a lot easier to do that than try to convince someone who does things a certain way to do them differently for you. Right. Exactly. Um, um, and you know, you also don't if that's not their area of expertise then they probably aren't going to be the most supportive because they don't necessarily know how to support in that manner. Right. So if you find a provider that's already doing natural childbirths and supporting that, then they've got tools and tips and tricks in their back pocket to help you succeed um, right. in your, in your wishes. So it definitely having that conversation is a must. Um, another tip would be, we absolutely believe in doulas and finding a doula that works for you and your family, um, is, and depending on where you live in this country, your access to doulas may be different. <laughs> so, um, it's always good to either ask us, ask a friend, um, you know, word of mouth and, and asking people who have been there before you is a great way to find someone who 
um, can support you along this journey. Right. Um, and then the, uh, you know, anybody can call themselves a doula. Um, there aren't any standards of, you know, what, what constitutes as a doula, but I would definitely encourage you to, um, <laughs> I would encourage you to seek out a doula that, you know, has experience with the hospital or the birth center, um, the place that you would be giving birth in, maybe a relationship with the doctors, um, you know, just ask questions, ask lots of questions. Um, another thing is to prepare mentally and physically. So. We, um, with our childbirth course, you um, obviously get some information about preparing um, mentally because that's a huge part of labor. And it's always good to exercise your brain just like you would and your mind just like you would your body. So we have a list of books and things to really help you get focused because I will say that labor, natural labor is a place you have to be prepared and focused mentally. Absolutely. It is definitely a mental game. I mean, 90% mental, if not more. Yeah. Um, Your body can do it. Right. And I mean, I've had, I've had some clients that, you know, have said they want to have a natural childbirth, but maybe weren't completely invested. So they had the, they had the epidural in their back pocket, which mm -hmm. is totally okay. But, um, if it's there, then there's a higher probability that you're going to use it. Yep. So if you go in now, obviously there's exceptions. So if your labor does not go the way that you plan for it to go right. you know, through our course, we can help you, you know, make the decisions that are right for you in that moment so that you can feel confident in your decisions, but yet, you know, you're not automatically going to the epidural, right? Um, you know, you want to have your com ways of comfort and, you know, natural pain tolerance than, you know, going straight for that epidural card. Right. It's important to just feel like you have a choice in the matter instead of you're reacting to a situation because you don't know what else to do. Yeah. Because I think we've all kind of been there in various situations where you weren't prepared. And so you just kind of go with the flow. And so if it's suggested, you're like, yeah, sure, let's, let's do that. And and that brings me to the point of your support person. It's equally as important for your support person to understand what labor is about, how it works, and um, the different stages and phases of labor. So that way, if you were to say, hey, I need an epidural, they know the right questions to ask you to see if that's really what you want. Right. Or if you were, to, if, you know, the medical professionals were to um, advise you to get one, your support person will understand how to help navigate you through mm -hmm. that, you know, time period. So whether you in fact go with it or if you're close to transition and you're, you're almost, almost there. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, there's, there's things that you have to go through um, to really decide if this is right for you. So that's, that is our kind of morning coffee talk about natural childbirth. Um, but we're always here for questions and we're always here to answer anything. I mean, even if you have a scheduled repeat C-section and you're wondering about, you know, you're seeing things about gentle cesareans or family centered cesareans that you can ask us, like, how do I get that? Because I, I hear a lot, like, I want this, but they said no. Yeah. So we can give you tools of how to ask for things in a way that you you get more of a response than you just can't. Right. Yep, exactly. Um, we also, if there's something that we haven't covered in either morning coffee talk or Thursday night um, content lives, we, you know, we want to make sure that we cover anything that's on your mind. This, this right. Is, this, we are here for, for you guys. Um, we want to help navigate your pregnancy and get you the answers that you deserve. Exactly. So uh, with that, I guess what's going on, let's just switch gears. And um, so what's, uh, what's going on? School started for you. I'm still enjoying summer. So. 
Um, I am uh, in soaking up the last few days of Washington summers before it starts raining. Oh, and that beautiful view that I didn't get to see. I know, but someone's here that gets to see it. <laughs> I know, so jealous. Hmm. We've actually had some pretty nice weather here in New Mexico. We've had, it's monsoon season towards the end of monsoon season. So lots of rain, which has cooled things off a little bit. Speaking of rain, I just want to say that we are absolutely praying for Texas and everyone there. Um, it is devastating what is going on um, in the Houston area and Rockport. It's very hard to watch. I just watched a little bit of the news. I usually don't, but these people are hanging out in, you know, shelters, the makeshift shelters and there's women with babies and small children, and it's very sad. It's very scary. And so um, if you guys are out there, just, you know, continue to pray or uh, send positive um, thoughts to that area. It's, it's very hard to watch. Yeah, it is. Our heart definitely goes out to families and friends and loved ones that are having to experience this and try to um, evacuate if they haven't already uh, or, you know, if they have evacuated and they're trying to, they're worried about what the state of their house is in. And yeah, it's just. It's, it's so scary. I saw that they evacuated like um, 22 NICU babies from a hospital and they had to take four airplanes. I mean, imagine like your precious babies being moved and you have to get to the new, it's just, there's so much. And, you know, babies, I saw a birth center that was talking about if you were going to go into labor, you know, that they would do their best to support these moms. And these are things that like, I think during a crisis, we don't often think about, but there may be a mom who's having a baby and there may be, um, you know, babies that are born that need um, help and they have to get to a, a facility. So array right. for the doctors and the, um, you know, paramedics who are able to make those types of things happen but right. yep exactly so we are thinking about you guys in south Texas. Yeah. well we'll be on thursday well actually thursday i'm going to be flying on an airplane so michaela may just be um taking on that uh i'm not sure exactly what time my flight is but in case i'm not here um, Michaela will do a live and we'll talk about something fabulous, but I will do my best. Maybe I'll just put in earbuds and, you know, find a corner in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it work. We've had lots of other, uh, technological is issues and so we'll make it work. Anyways. Oh, Crystal, I think you're frozen. Oh, there you are. You're back with us. It keeps dying on me somehow. <laughs> Anyway, it goes into sleep mode while you're talking. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exciting, huh? I, I can't stand technology <laughs> today. But all right. Well, anyway, this is Morning Coffee Talk with the Birth Besties. And we hope to see you on Thursday. And we'll be in touch, I guess. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Um, bye, guys. Bye.